so that way okay let us um, uh, what you call these are the possibilities let us look what what is the examiner's key at a later point now let us go to the next question systolic murmur in tetralogy of fallow why do you listen to that what are the three lesions in systolic uh, four lesions in top doctor you have one vsd one ps both of them are capable of causing systolic murmur isolated and then uh, you also have got a uh, overriding and also you have a rv uh, hypertrophy but the murmur that you listen systolic murmur is what is due to the ps not due to the vsd which is are of a more low flow kind of situation so the easiest way to fail md exam is the examiner will ask you why are you listening uh, the systolic murmur in this case of young girl with the squatting episodes with the cyanosis sir it is a tough and i am thinking vsd is causing it then he will say that 6 months you keep on listening and tell me i will come after 6 months and then we will decide ps should be your answer and once more what decides the prognosis and severity of the top doctor it is not the vsd once more it is the ps ps is like the mother of top and if it is more severe it will bother you you and also the mother of the patient so systolic murmur is more often due to the ps is what need to be remembered and it is the right ventricular outlet obstruction which decides the prognosis and also the systolic ejection murmur that you come across now let us go to the next question pulses paradoxus is a feature of the cardiac tamponade all of you know very well now if cardiac tamponade occurs in sudden special situations though there is a tamponade still there is no pulses paradoxus then what are those situations is a very important question now but before that i like to ask you what do you mean by pulses paradoxus doctor normally what happens normally whenever we have an inspiration there is a decrease of the systemic blood pressure if you check the bp bp will be lower in uh, inspiration and little higher on the expiration why because whenever we have an inspiration there is a negative intrathoracic pressure and more amount of blood will enter into the right side of the heart venous sucking will be there into the right side of the heart because that negative intrathoracic pressure and more blood enters into the right ventricle and one concept is it will push the left interventricular septum and makes the left ventricle outflow to become impeded and that will decrease the left ventricular output which can lead to a fall of the systolic bp and uh, what happens in the case of um, pulses paradoxus it is not the reverse it is the same thing but become exaggerated so that is what happens in the case of pulses paradoxus then why are we calling it as paradoxus we can say that uh, pulses more pulses excess or something like that why are we calling paradoxus the reason is if you put your stethoscope you can still listen the heart sounds but if you look at the pulse of the patient because of the decrease ventricular output pulse is absent absent pulse but with the listening heart sounds is is called paradoxus about the pulses paradoxus so what conditions lead to pulses paradoxus a severe constrictive pericarditis severe copd restrictive cardiomyopathy pulmonary embolism right ventricular infarction any of them can lead to the development of it now what is the cause for it what is the mechanism of pulses paradoxus one mechanism is whenever we have inspiration all the blood become pooled in the pulmonary vasculature because of the increase of the pulmonary venous complaints and that will decrease the amount of blood that is there on the left side of the circulation and hence the cardiac output become diminished that is one concept second theory is once there is more filling of the right heart then uh, it will cause the distension of the right ventricle which will cause the compression of the left ventricle which will decrease the stroke volume the second concept so most important thing is uh, for the pulses paradoxus to happen the right ventricle should dominate the left ventricle and make it to become compromised the right ventricle should become like a obese husband and the left ventricle should become like a slim wife who had been stampeded because of the movement of him but if the wife is also obese both of them will hit each other while traveling in maruti 800 only car get affected none of them become affected right now the question is 
any condition that makes the left ventricle to be filled with more amount of blood at the end of the diastole and left ventricle is already very fat then any amount of rise of the right ventricular size will not affect the left ventricle now what causes the left ventricle to become so obese and fat and makes the left ventricular diastolic pressure to be higher so that it is not affected by the right ventricle's encroachment into its privacy if there is a atrial septal defect if there is a aortic regurgitation if at all there is any pulmonary hypertension in all these situations what will happen doctor the left ventricular diastolic pressure become markedly elevated now you will ask me a question sir why in atrial septal defect in atrial septal defect what is happening left atrial blood is going into right atrium so how can left ventricular end diastolic pressure will increase naturally that is your doubt right but where is all that blood going into left atrium to right atrium to right ventricle to pulmonary circulation back into the left ventricle only na no? left atrium back into the left ventricle so effectively what will happen left ventricle end diastolic pressure will increase and though there is a tamponade still there is no development of pulses paradoxes is what you need to basically remember now there is another situation called reverse pulses paradoxes i think already you all got the answer for the 2009 i am giving you a small question what do you mean by reverse pulses paradoxes typically instead of fall of the systolic blood pressure there is a rise of the systolic blood pressure with inspiration when does it happen it happens in hypertrophic obstruct subaortic stenosis is a very important situation and also those patients who are on the positive pressure ventilation on ventilator also typically it happens now finally summarize doctor before we go to the next question what are all the conditions where in spite of the cardiac tamponade pulses paradoxes still will not be there all the conditions where there is a rise of the left ventricular diastolic pressure end diastolic pressure like the aortic regurgitation a large atrial septal defect and if there is an associated isolated right heart tamponade alone if there is any elevated left ventricular diastolic pressure whatever be the reason in all those uh, important scenarios so what is your answer in this case doctor in this um, it is absent in the case of the ar in the case of the aortic regurgitation because it causes the rise of the left ventricular end diastolic pressure and prevents the tamponade from happening now valve is damaged in which condition how many answer it has rheumatic heart disease doctor a good number naturally no but you may ask me a question sir lipman sacks endocarditis lupus erythromatosus we see very much that there are vegetations in the valve but i like to ask you a question how many ms as all this valvular heart disease are because of the sle patients in your clinical practice or in your observation not many and those who had infective endocarditis how many of them are ending up with a sequela of as or ms not many so they affect the valves but they do not destroy the valves unlike the rheumatic heart disease which is capable of destroying the valves and leading to the various valvular abnormalities is the underlying basis of this question so this is how the transesophageal image can uh, be able to show the presence of those uh, attached vegetations in the case of the ligman sacs endocarditis now anchor is a very favorite topic of the examiner doctor in the rheumatology uh, anchor are those igg antibodies against the cytoplasm of the neutrophilic granulocytes you have the p anka which is peri nuclear staining pattern and you also have the c anka which is the cytoplasmic type of uh, staining pattern now there are a set of entities which are called the anka associated vasculitis called as the aav churchstrauss syndrome microscopic polyangiitis and vaginus they are all classical examples of anka associated vasculitis is what need to be remembered there is uh, one of the options given was hanox collins perfida it also leads to vasculitis but not anka associated it leads to perfida arthritis abdominal pain hematuria etc etc now let us talk about the megaloblastic anemia once more you are going for any entrance means anemia is one definite topic sideroblastic anemia of chronic disease anemia of renal failure i think on anemia only there are three or four questions in the ap entrance so that should become your approach in the last moment for the junior students i like to tell you that now you can read with all the top session full textbook last moment you must be specific which topics 
to consider and what to ignore. That brevity should come. So hereditary aortic aciduria, Leshkini Hahn syndrome are the inborn errors which can lead to megaloblastic anemia. And also you have got the methyl malonic aciduria, homocysteinuria where vitamin B12 deficiency associated and folate metabolism can cause. And um, the megaloblastic anemia can be associated with the autoimmune hypothyroidism, pernicious anemia also is what I like to underscore to all of you. Now one of the options given was abeta lipoproteinemia. Was it there in the options? Good. So in abeta lipoproteinemia also we find a anemia but not megaloblastic. What type of anemia? It's called as a spursal anemia because acanthocytes are what you come across in the case of the abeta lipoproteinemia which presents with ataxia, retinitis pigmentosa with the blindness and the presence of um, uh, spursals in the peripheral smear is what need to be remembered. In chronic renal failure, what is the type of anemia? Because there is no erythropoietin, it's a normocytic normochromic anemia. In the case of Wilson's disease, what do you come across, doctor? Serum celluloplasmin levels become low, not increased. KF rings are very much found. And if you are able to recall what was the fourth option, you can just write it down on the paper. We will include it. Now let us talk about the Turner's syndrome. What is the importance of Turner's? Turner's syndrome can become an IPS officer. Turner syndrome can top the civil services exam. There is no mental retardation. She may be topping the woman quota because she has no mental retardation. So that is a very important differentiating factor. They have short stature, finger deformities and web neck very much but a normal intelligence is what need to be remembered. Let us talk about the Kleinfelter syndrome. Kleinfelter undoubtedly is the most common cause for the hypogonadism in the case of the males. And what else will happen in Kleinfelter? Kleinfelter leads to hypogonadism because testes are abnormal, subtly cells are dried out, and there is a gynecomastia, hyalinization of the seminiferous tubules, and ductility to development of elevated gonadotropin levels, uh, and there is a high plasma FSH and LH uh, and estradiol, but a low plasma testosterone, that is the combination that you come across. Were there any other options which would have been the correct answer? Mental retardation, Mental retardation was also one of the options that were given. Okay. And what else? Most, most, common, uh, most common genetic abnormality associated with the sex chromosome. Okay. Uh, just recall those other two options also. We will try to uh, look into it. Definitely these two are not the um, uh, answers.